Hey, good morning. So uh, it's hard to set up your camera when you got to have it charged because my phone sucks. I, uh, I didn't charge it last night at all. And so I woke up this morning and it's at 10%. Well, when my phone gets to 7%, you got to plug it in or else it powers off. And what's crazy is I go to plug it in and a couple seconds later, it's like 25%. And it's like, you're a liar phone. I know you're lying. So, hey, Amanda. So this morning I'm over here like I got to do what I was supposed to do yesterday, but I didn't do because all these things happened yesterday, and so I couldn't do what I was supposed to do. And yesterday, I don't know what my problem was. I had a very bad day. And I don't let my feelings show to the outside world. What I do is I show them to my family. And that probably was the bad thing to do yesterday, because yesterday I just was a huge sobbing mess. I cried literally all day long. I don't know why. I have no clue. I think a lot of it, and I know this is probably stupid, but I honestly think a lot of it is I just really, really, really miss my mom and my family. Um, I mean, I don't know if I know a lot of you, you know, that are my friends know, but my mom killed herself three years ago, going on four years in September. And since that day, my dad, my brothers, everyone has disowned me. So it's kind of like the day my mom killed herself, I lost my whole family. I lost my dad, my brothers, no one will speak to me at all. So I lost my whole family. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, but you have the church family and stuff. And it's like, you don't understand it's not the same and here lately I'm really 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 trying to change and it is so hard because I didn't grow up going to church all the time uh, I didn't even grow up in a church family, my parents and stuff never went. I was always the type that, you know, went just because I wanted to. My parents would stay home and stuff. And honestly, whenever that happened to my mom and stuff, that's never I really, I don't know, I told God before she killed herself because a whole bunch of stuff happened that last week before she killed herself. We, um, we're not on talking terms because I finally had enough and I finally drew my line, but, um, I wasn't on talking terms with her. And so my last words to her were very hateful and hurtful. And I guess I get it. That's why my dad and brothers won't talk to me now, you know, cause I just was like, whatever, mom, I don't care. <laughs> I don't even know the purpose of this video, of this live. What I was trying to say is it's really hard to try to set my phone up because I have it on a charger. So I'm over here having to get a mug to put my charger into so it will come up to charge it. And I had to move my little plant here. But I guess I'm just going to start at the beginning. I don't know. You guys already had me crying this morning. So, I grew up and lived a very messed up lifestyle. And because of it, I now am turning into that lifestyle, I guess, for Briley. She told me this morning, and it hurts. Every time she says something to me, or every time, like, Stan will say something to me, it hurts. And I'm the type, I don't know how to express my feelings to them, so I just clam up, and I just shut up, and I'm like, mm-hmm, okay. But this morning, and I know, but Briley, she said, you're the worst mom ever. And I'm just like, yep, 
I know. I don't know how to change, Riley, because this is how I grew up, you know? This is how I was treated when I was younger. And I had a great mom. I had a great dad. I had great brothers. But I was the oldest, you know? I have two younger brothers. Um, but I was the oldest, so obviously if you're the oldest, what happens? You make all the mistakes. If you're the oldest, you get in trouble first. And your brothers or your siblings watch and they're like, oh, we know not to do that because look what happened to Amanda when she messed up. You know, she got in trouble and this is what happened. So, yeah, I got in trouble a lot. And that's like another thing. I remember I was like eight or nine. And this is why I don't cuss to this day. This has nothing to do with, well, going to church too. But um, I was eight or nine and we had this van and it was one of those old types of vans. It had the two seats up front with like a couch in the back and that turned into a bed and it had like a sink. Well, again, I had two brothers, so I was sitting on my knees up in between my mom and dad. And I remember saying something. I said a bad word. And my mom goes and like backhands me and I go flying to the back of the van. So from that day, I was like, okay, I'm never going to cuss again because I don't want backhanded. And then I remember um, whenever I was... A freshman in high school, we lived in Oregon, and my f best friend, Joe, was at our house. I think Joe was there. Yeah. So, Joe, if you're watching this, let me know if you're there or not. But um, my brother locked me out of the house, and I'm over here banging on the door. Let me in. Let me in. I, you know, let me in the house. And again, at this time, I didn't know that bastard was a bad word. So I said, let me in, you bastard. And here comes my dad, and my hair was probably just like this, and he drugged me, got grabbed me by my bun, and drugged me from the living room all the way to my bedroom. And so I learned, okay, never say bastard ever again. But um, I'm turning into the parents that I hated to Briley, and not, not like the physical so please don't hear what I'm not trying to say, but it's the verbal. I'm just like all the time and I need help on it. And it's like, I'm trying so hard to change. And it's like, I don't know how to be the loving mom that so many people have or are. I don't know how to say this, but I just keep it in, like, because I have no one to tell. I have tons of people I can talk to, and I get that, but it is so hard. The only person I have that I can talk to is God. And I know that, you know, if I keep putting my faith in him and everything, that it will get better. But it's like, when will it? When will I learn to... When will I learn, you know, like... Like Stan yesterday... Because at church last night, I'm just sitting there crying and stuff because it's like, I want to yell out, you know, please help me so what I need help, but I don't know how. And <sighs> um. And I think what I mean, I don't even know what I'm trying to say, but 
I miss my mom so much. I miss my dad. My dad don't even know that we have Breezley now. And what's sad is, like, oh my gosh. Like, what's sad is, like, um, me and Briley never bonded when she was born. We did, but we didn't. And I just was always like, I, I don't know, because I've always wanted kids and everything. And her and I never really bonded and stuff. And then now that I have Breezley, me and her are like really, really bonding. And people are telling me, so are you bonding better with her than you did with Briley? And it's like, you don't get it. I want to really, really bad bond with both of them, but I don't know how to have that loving mother-daughter relationship. But I don't even know how to go about to tell. But um, the day that my mom died also is probably the best day of my life because it's not... But it is. It's so hard to explain this. I love her and miss her so much. And everyone's like, but you hated how she treated you and everything else. It's like, but whenever you grow up, that's what you know. You know? It's so hard to explain it. It's like, I never had the loving... I had the loving mother, but I didn't have a loving mother. It's so, so hard to explain. I mean, I would do anything for her. Just like I know she would do anything for me. And when she died, my whole world was crushed. Because I just was like, I have no one now. Because in here, we have no family. I don't. And I really didn't think that my dad and brothers would like disown me like they have I don't even know where my dad or brothers are and that's I think what hurts so much is because I literally and I know everyone's like but you have your family you have Stan and Briley and it's like it's still not the same because when I was having a hard day or if I needed advice, even though I knew I would get bad advice, I would call my mom. <laughs> and it was always bad advice, but at least I got advice, you know? And now I have no one. Now whenever I call for advice someone, they give me great advice. And it's like, I want the bad advice so I can make my own decision if it's bad or good. <laughs> and I know that probably sounds so stupid. And you're like, really, Amanda? <laughs> But, so we had a bad week, and then the day that she did, you know, kill herself and stuff, my brother called me and told me he needed me, and I never went to his house. I probably should have, but my then non-pastor, but who is now my pastor, they came over and told me not to go to Brant's and stuff, and I wanted to go so bad. I don't know why I wanted to go, but I wanted to be with my family. <laughs> and maybe if I would have went, they wouldn't have disowned me. They wouldn't have shunned me. And maybe it's good that I didn't go either, because maybe if I would have went, I wouldn't have started going to church either. So I think that's the first time I got to see, like, the true love of Christ was that day. And that's why I say it was, like, the best day. But, um, the morning she passed away, that morning, I was just having a really good day. And I don't know if, I think it was probably God tell I don't know. I really don't know. But that morning, I woke up, and so this song was on my mind. Uh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, but it's like the old black woman's version, you know, with the, 
I'm not gonna sing it because I can't sing. I mean, I, I can sing this song, but I don't want you guys laughing at me. But, uh, there's only one version that I like of this song. And again, I haven't been to church in years, you know. And I just woke up singing this song, and I even posted it on Facebook that morning. So, every year on this day, it shows up. But I love that, and so... I thought that day was going to, you know, be a good day and everything. And went on with the day, went and ate lunch and everything. Came back to town, and that's never my brother called. And he's like, Mom shot herself. And I'm just like, what? Is she okay? Not thinking that, you know, she's dead. And he's like, no, she's dead. I need you and everything. But I didn't know what to do. Because it's like... The one person that I could tell anything to was now God. But anyway, so that was on a Friday. And that Sunday, after the Friday, I know the pastor and everything came to our house. And Sunday, no one came over or anything. And I just, I don't know, it's like I died. I just cried and cried and cried because it's like I needed my mom. <laughs> And you don't know what it's like until you lose your parent, but it's, I guess it would be different if you knew they were dying, but it's like, there's a car wreck, and I lost my whole family. I really don't know what I'm trying to say. And I can't tell no one, because it just hurts. But yesterday... And I woke up and someone wrote on Facebook that they're doing a jail ministry and everything and they didn't want to go and then finally they decided to go and they had nothing written up and I'm just like I want to do that I need to do that I need to go and tell people how God has changed me you know because I'm sitting here not doing anything. I try to do it at paint nights, but it seems like they just dwindle down. It's like no one wants to come paint or anything, and that's like my whole mission is to try to share Jesus. And I try to think of different ways to like make it different. <sighs> But anyways, that song, I played it. Um, but my friend, because I went to church that day, that Sunday, and I didn't even have a Bible. I had a Bible. It was a, she didn't like my Bible. But I had a Jimmy Swaggered uh, edition. That doesn't mean it was a Jimmy Swagger Bible. All it means is, I got a little stack of books here. All it means is it was, this is a bad example. Let me show my, oh, there goes my little phone thingy. Bear with me. All it means is it had little things at the bottom little footnotes of what he thinks the verses means. That's all. And the only reason I like that one is because, again, whenever I was 14, it was given to me by this old man. And so I was like, this is my only Bible I've ever had. When I was 14, I got my first Bible. So my friend gave me this Bible. It's an English Standard Version. And... I've had it for three years now, and as you can tell, I write in it a lot. 
I, uh, I have little marks. Um, I have, I write in it quite a bit. I even draw in it and everything. And I've bought other Bibles. That's why I got my little stack of Bibles here. So I love this Bible. And I'm like, I love this Bible so much, but it's starting to, you know, fall apart. I mean, let me show you. Look at that. It's literally falling apart, but I love it. So I went and bought this Bible. I don't know. I bought this Bible like two years ago, and it's nice and crisp. It has little page tabs because I was like, I need to know where things are, and... I thought I liked this Bible, but it's not this one. And this is a new King James, because everyone's like, oh, get a different version, Amanda, because I don't know what I'm reading. I try to read. I, I can't figure it out. So then last year, I got this one, a chronological Bible, which I never did it. This year, I actually am staying on task every single day but again I stopped writing that last year and then last year I think my husband got me she reads truth for my birthday which I love this one but again I don't know how to study I don't know how to read and that's where it's like I need people to help me. And that's why, I don't know. Um, and I know everyone's like, well, why do you want to go on a mission if you don't even know the Bible? Why do you want to go do this if you don't know this? Why do you want to teach if you don't even know how to teach and you don't know what you're reading? Well, I'm the type, if I'm teaching, I, ha I read to know what I'm doing. And... I learn more that way. But anyways, I got this book. It's really good if you guys want to get it. The Insanity of God. Um, it's about this guy, though, who's a missionary. And it talks about him going to Africa and Samaria and really, really bad times. But it talks about how his faith can survive and everything. I know now I'm like starting to babble. But then I got this one, which is really, really good. I really like this one too. And this one shows you how to study the Bible in a way, but it don't. It tells you how to go through. But anyway, so my resort is to always go back to this one. So again, back to my story. I started going to church right after my mom killed herself. She killed herself on September 4th. I started going to church the Sunday after, which would have been the 6th. And I'm all, you know, like anyone that goes to church around here in Missouri. I'm not being, I'm not trying to single anyone out whatsoever. Um, I'm just the type. I'm good. I'm good. I got a Bible. My Bible. I wore a... I'm sorry. I got boob sweat. Yeah. I got a... Boy, it's just not embarrassing. Oh. Yeah, I wish I knew how to edit video so I can just edit that part out. But, um... I'm over here. Yep, I'm good. My husband needs church. My daughter needs church and stuff. I'm good. I've been trying to get them to go to church, which that was my mindset. I have several years, you know, try to get them to go to church and stuff because I didn't need fixed at all. I was good because I knew God. I got saved when I was nine. I was perfect. <laughs> no, I was far from perfect. Um, we started going to church, like I said, in September. Stan got baptized on the 6th. And it wasn't until the very next day on a Monday, we are at work. And he's like, 
I gotta get baptized again. I was like, what do you mean? You just got baptized yesterday, Stan. And, you know, he said you're saved and everything, yes, Shane. He's like, no, I wasn't. He's like, I just now got saved. I gotta get baptized again. I was like, they're gonna think you're a fool. You know? So, he goes and gets baptized again, and it was... I thought... I. I thought he was getting rebaptized. That's what they said or something. And so it wasn't until October, our church, the guys used to go down to the creek and pray all the time. And I would go down there because I thought it was really neat, you know, to go pray by the creek right after Sunday school. And one morning I used to smoke cigarettes. I am a non-smoker now, but, um, one morning I was smoking right after Sunday school and I thought I seen my husband going down to the creek. So I walked down there and it wasn't my husband down there at the creek praying. It was another guy from our church and stuff. So it was my very first time going down there to pray at the creek and all the guys came and it was really neat how they prayed. They got in a circle and one prayed and then another one, then another one, then another one, then another one. And I just was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And that's the first time I think I ever truly felt like the Holy Spirit working and stuff. And I'm standing there and I'm like, you need to get baptized. And I was like, I don't want to get baptized. I don't need to get baptized. I've already got baptized when I'm nine. No way. And so I told my pastor, and this is where God was winning again in our little argument that we had. So I told my pastor, I was like, I need to get baptized in Dallas. He looked at me and I think he left. He's like, right now? Because it was 30, 40 degrees outside. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I need to get baptized. And he's like, well, let's wait until after church. And I think he said that because you know, it to work and warm up. And I was like, no, I need to get baptized right now. And I know this is not how to get to heaven. This is, again, I'm still lost, but I don't know this at this point. So my pastor and me, we go in the creek, and I got baptized, and I go to church, and it's so cold. It was really, really, really cold. <sighs> go to church, and people's like, why is the pastor wet, and why is Amanda wet? And uh, they said she was baptized. Well, that's never God really started working on me for the whole year. He's working on me and working on me, and I'm starting to actually learn this Bible that I've never in my life ever picked up and read. Again, last time I ever went to church, I was a kid. You know, so I never went to church my, in my adult years. So I'm learning, you know, to start reading. I learned who Saul was, or Paul, actually. Never knew who Saul was or Paul. I didn't even know that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospels, were letters. Never knew that until now. Uh, didn't know that there was 66 books in the Bible. I mean, I knew all the Sunday school stories, you know, Jonah. I knew about Noah. I knew about creation. I knew Jesus and Mary. I didn't know that we had Paul who used to be a murderer and everything. And for some reason, I, I really connect with Paul. Didn't know about Stephen, you know, the first one that got martyred. Didn't even know what the word martyr was. So I started going to, you know, the women's study groups. And I did good, but I just was like, I need to know how to do this on my own. How to, like, really study. Because I want to know so much. And that first year, like I was saying, God really started working with me. Every time there was a revival, we went to it. We would go down to Piney Point which is an hour drive. We go down to Decatur, which is even longer. It's like an hour and a half, but we didn't go every night to Decatur. But every time Piney Point has revival, we are there because there is something about the Holy Spirit there. And uh, I love that church. I love my church. I love church. <laughs> it's like so hard to explain now. I actually love church. They are my family and I don't know what I would do without church probably go insane but um so that whole year i'm really he's really working on me and talking with me and stuff 
and I'm not paying attention. And then one day in uh, September or August of 2016, because again, it took like a year, uh, they start talking about, I don't know, my pastor's starting to preach about some things, and I'm just like questioning a lot of things, and me and him, uh, my daughter, I homeschool her now as of 2015, so they have homeschool art in Eagle Rock, and we're at homeschool art, and I think the women were outside, and again, this is where I had brothers growing up. <laughs> And so this is where I don't know how to, I don't know how to be a girl. I don't know how to dress like a girl or anything. This is why my hair is, and why my hair is always in a bun is because it's curly. And if you got curly hair and you brush it, you got a big afro. I have makeup. I know how to do my makeup when I want to, but it's easier just to dress like a tomboy, I guess. I don't know. Now, my mom, totally different. She didn't leave the house unless she had makeup on or her hair done. But I don't know how to be a girl. And um, anyways, so all the women were outside, you know, at the park while the kids were inside doing art. And my pastor wanted to be inside that day. And so my pastor's inside and I'm sitting there and reading my Bible, you know, because... I'm really trying, actually, no, I wasn't reading my Bible. I was actually reading this book, Cold Case Christianity. Now, I was telling Dallas about it, and I don't think he really cared too much for it. They made a movie on it, by the way, now. Um, I think the movie just came out last year. But I don't think Dallas really cared too much about it. I don't think he cares a lot for a lot of the books I read. Unless someone else mentions it to him. No offense, Dallas, if you're watching this. But that's how you are. <laughs> but um, I was really getting into this book. And I was, you know, kind of telling Dallas about... It's telling all the... You know, how this guy is trying to prove how Jesus is not real. When, in actuality, he's actually becoming a Christian himself. <laughs> and we were just talking. And then the next Sunday, I think I was in the back row. Because this is before Dallas made us start sitting up front. It's another thing. Whenever you go to church, try to sit closer to the front. <laughs> um, if you're trying to act all, we're good, we're good, you know. If you sit in the back row, that like, that lets them know that you're probably not good. Maybe that's just my perspective. But um, me and Dallas talked and I was a crying baby in there. I mean, we, I sobbed and sobbed and sobbed. Then it was another two or three weeks of him preaching. And then it was this one preaching. He's talking about a butterfly and caterpillars and metamorphosism. And I'm like, what? You know? And again, the Holy Spirit's been working on me for a whole year. So it's starting to make sense. Some of the things it's starting to make sense. He was talking about metamorphosism and how we're actually caterpillars, but once you are truly saved, what happens to a caterpillar when they're turning, you know, when they are metamorphosizing, they're turning into something different. They're turning into a butterfly. So it's like salvation. If you are truly saved, again, I thought I was saved when I was a kid. And if I was nine, you know, I went to church camp and stuff and said a little prayer, but they didn't explain to us that you got to change. They didn't explain to us about Paul. They didn't explain to us about metamorphosism as kids. And I wish I would have known. Probably would have made all the mistakes I've made and been as messed up as I was. But, um, so he's starting to talk about metamorphosism and caterpillars turning into butterflies and I'm just sitting there thinking I'm a caterpillar I never turned into a butterfly and then I'm like these people are gonna think I'm a liar because I'm like yeah I'm good I'm over here you know teaching your Sunday school class I'm teaching the kids and I don't even know myself and 
I never raised, I think I raised my hand. I don't know. They're asking some question, like if you want prayer. And I raised my hand. And then afterwards, they're like, please pray for the one person for, you know, to be saved. And I'm over here thinking, wait, I didn't pray to be saved. I just raised my hand because I wanted, you know, prayer. But maybe I didn't hear what they were saying the first time. And I raised my hand because I needed to be saved, you know. So I'm still contemplating the whole metamorphosis and I went home and I really started praying and reading then I had a friend come over and it was our first time talking in a few months and she told me that yes there's the change of the metamorphosis but she brought in other words that I never knew you know like submit and surrender she's like you gotta surrender your whole life to him and I was like, but I don't know how. And she's like, well, you just pray and he'll help you, you know? So that's whenever, it was a Tuesday, and I was here, you know. I think I was talking to her on my dad's birthday. Because again, every time, like, my dad or my brother's birthdays come around or my mom's birthday, I just get in this slump. And I'm just like, I wish they were here because just want to see him and I know my dad this is how bad I was in his phone he had me saved as spawn of Hitler where I have my dad saved as dad you know I mean how nice and I know you guys are like but why do you want to talk to someone that you know saved your name as spawn of Hitler He's my dad. He's the only one I ever had as a dad. My real dad never talked to me. And that's like my real dad died when I was uh, 20. So I don't even know my real dad. Because he's dead and gone. And my real mom, she's dead and gone. So it's like, just me. But, uh... I even told my dad and stuff, why do you, why can't you change my name to Amanda or, you know, daughter or something? Why do I have to be saved as Spawn of Hitler? I don't get it. I guess because, again, I was the oldest and I was mean to my younger brothers and stuff, you know? I mean, I was really mean. Brutal. Mean. Mean. I feel so bad. I really, really do feel bad for how I treat them, and I think that's why I go on, and that's how I treat others like I did. And it's so hard to change. And what people don't see, they don't see that I still treat Riley like that. And I know she probably cries herself to sleep and everything, just like I do. But on October 18th is whenever I finally surrendered my life to Jesus. That's whenever I finally got saved. But you know what? I did change. There's a lot of things from, if you look at me, you know, five years ago, or even four years ago until now, where... There's a huge, huge change. I'm trying to think. And um, there's a huge change. I don't hate people like I used to. Because used to, I hated people. I broke, seriously, all Ten Commandments. And what I'm trying to say is I've murdered people. Because it says if you look at someone and hate them, you might as well have murdered them. So I've murdered people. I've committed adultery. Because if you look at someone and lust after them, you're committing adultery. I've lied. I've had other gods 
That's what I'm still working on because technically my phone is my God. Because anything that you put before God is a God. And my phone is with me 24-7. My kids are with me 24-7. Sometimes I put them before God. But you know what? The day I got saved, they say you have to surrender your life. It's not just the one day. It is a constant, daily surrendering of your life. Every single day of surrendering. And so every single day, it's a battle. But every day I wake up and I read. And I talk to him. Even whenever we were camping, me and my daughter, we would sit out at the picnic table and read. Sometimes before I even went out to the picnic table, I'd sit inside and read. And everyone's like, but if you read, your day gets so much better. And for me, it's like it's not happening yet. Where does this start? I still read, like I was telling Dallas. I'm my logical. I'm in Job, and I'm at the, well, I've been at the part where everyone's like, Job's such a bad book, and everything else, it's, if you're having a bad day, go read Job. I love Job. It's like a big, I don't know, I'm over here thinking of, like, Shakespeare, how they talked, you know, but I was telling Dallas, I'm like, because I call my pastor, like, every day, he probably gets sick of me calling him. But I got questions and I have no one else to ask because other people that I want to ask, it's like I don't want to burden them with my questions and I don't want them thinking that I'm like weird or they don't answer their phone whenever I got questions. And so I call my pastor and I'm like, some of the questions, I'm like, when he's sitting there, he's sitting there, you know, for seven days. I'm like, I'm over here picturing, you know, reading Job. They're sitting around a campfire. Here's Job and his three friends watching this fire. I'm like, how long did this conversation last? He don't know the answer. So I'm still struggling with that, you know, trying to find out the answer. But uh, whenever I read, I think of them as stories. And that's where I need to change and think of them as, how's this going to change my life today? How's And, you know, spiritual change I need in this. But, I don't know, every day is a struggle. And I know when you get saved, they're like, oh, it's the best day of your life and everything. It's not. It is the hardest choice you'll ever make. The easy choice is to keep living with the world. The easy choice is to go and do whatever you want however you want to do it, and everything else. It is hard, really, really hard to follow God and follow Jesus. You're going to lose all your friends. I lost my whole family. I'm like Job, kind of. And he, God's now blessed me with, you know, a new family because I caught my baby now again. Or, having a, you know, I had another baby. And bless Stan, he's stood by me, you know, for these going on 19 years now, but it is, I've lost so many friends and family, but you know, I don't care. I really don't. I would like to see my dad and my brothers and, you know, family members, but friends, but then again, I'm like, do I really want to see them? Honestly? I mean, yeah, I pray for them all the time, but do I really want to see them? I mean, yeah, I know how my dad treated me, you know, with the verbal abuse and everything else. And that kind of carried on. That's what I need to learn to not do. I need to be loving, you know, to my kids and to my husband. And But I don't know how. Like, Stan will have these conversations. And Stan's like, why do you just clam up and shut up? Why can't we just talk? And I don't know how to talk to him because... Growing up, you know, watching my parents, I seen them fight. All they did was physically fight. My dad gave my mom black eyes and she broke his arm. And thank goodness we don't do that. I mean, we don't even have arguments ever, really. 
and I don't know how to have that, you know? This, like I went to this thing last week, we were helping this guy, we were trying to help him, you know, we are letting him stay in our shed and everything, and I was taking him to, oh, what is it called, um, what's it called, Celebrate Recovery, I took him last week, two weeks ago, sorry, I just lied, two weeks ago, I took him to one, and, uh, Washburn, I was like, I'll take you to, you know, Washburn because I know Eric Freeman, he's a good friend of mine and everything, and I took him and I'm like, yep, this is for him, this is my fam, my, not family, this is my little buddy that's, you know, staying in our shed, he needs help, he needs Celebrate Recovery, and I'm over here like, this is a really cool thing, this isn't for alcoholics and drunkards and drug users this is for this is for people that you know have that are hurting like me that has no one to go to and uh, i don't know what i'm trying to say this video just went crazy but i think what god's trying to tell me is i need to get out there and tell my testimony to people but sum it up or it's not just all blabbling and crying and everything else. So, I think that's what he was telling me because I'm feeling a lot better. I don't know. I really don't know. But I want to. So hopefully this year, hopefully with classes, my goal, my plan with Messy Apron, however long it stays open, Kind of hard to stay open if I don't have people attending classes to pay the bills over there and everything. But my plan is now to uh, take a, have all the bills paid and everything first and foremost so that we have a building. But putting another in saving so that I can go on a mission trip and my mission trip don't have to be overseas. It can be here. It can be telling my story to other people, but I just got to figure out how to sum it up. And Amber, you can come with me. You need to tell your story too. I haven't even heard your story. But I think there's a lot of other people out there that are like me that need to hear other people tell their testimony. And share Jesus with other people. And I think that's what God wants me to do. Sorry it took however long this video is. I don't even know. It won't tell me. Sorry it took that long to tell you that. That's what God wants me to do. Is go tell others about him. I've tried teaching at church. And I kind of blew that up. So I don't teach no more. But maybe one day God will bless it bless me with another teaching position, which I know I have messy apron. And I've actually thought about doing a weekly, once a week, uh women's study. Get someone in there that will really show other women here in the area that don't know how to read and study their Bible how to do it. I think that'd be cool because it is what I'm hungry for and what I'm thirsty for is Jesus. And I need him every single day. And I need help on how to get more of him. It's, I don't know. Uh, I'll read these comments here later, but I'm going to get off here because my bathroom. Oh, my bathroom might shower every two months. I have to go put baking soda in it. And I got to put vinegar in there. And I, my water has been boiling on the stove for this whole video. Because I take the boiling water and then I go and like, because my hair, it clogs it up. Kim, I would love that. 
I really would. I guess this is me reaching out that I need someone to talk to. But I'm going to get off here. You guys have a great day. I am going to the shop today because I got to get stuff ready for tomorrow. And Breezley, I think, just woke up. <laughs> so I got to get off here anyways. You guys have a great day. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Thank you for listening. If you stayed the whole time. Thank you. Thank you, Amber. But I'm hitting finish now. Bye, guys.